Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this new video, I'm going to show you how to use the LCD display with the ESP32 board. Then we are going to make a simple project. We are going to use the ESP32 Wi-Fi capability to request the date and the time from the NTP server and display your local time on this LCD display. I've talked about this NTP server in the previous video. Make sure to check it out if you want more details. And before we get started, make sure to smash the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's jump right into it. So in today's episode, you're gonna need an ESP32 microcontroller and the LCD display. So this display comes with a module that is called I2C and it allows you to control the display using four pins. I highly recommend you to buy it with this module. So to hook it up to the board, let's take a look at this schematic diagram. As you can see, we have four pins that comes with the I2C module. The G and D goes to the G and D of the ESP32 board. The VCC goes to the five volt pin. Then we have the SDA. You have to hook it up to the SDA of the board. For me, it is the pin number 21. And the SEL goes to the SEL. You have to look at the pinout diagram of the board that you have. For me, I have this one SEL, which is number 22, and the SDA is number 21. Now you could pause the video and hook up the LCD display that you have. For that, you will need few female to female jumper wires. I'm gonna start by connecting the GND, which is on top, to the GND of the board, like this one, it is labeled GND. Then the VCC goes to the VN or the 5 volt pin. We have this LED that turns on. That means we have power at this module. And finally, we have the SDA goes to the SDA, the SEL of the module goes to the SEL, and it is this pin number 22. Now let's move on to the Arduino IDE so that we can display some information on this LCD display. Before we start writing the code, I highly recommend you to watch my first video about the ESP32 board because you have to install the ESP32 package and make some changes to this IDE. The link of the video is going to be under the description. Then to use the LCD display, we have to install a library that is called liquid crystal underscore I2C from the library manager which is this icon and search for the name liquid crystal then i2c and it is this one by frank make sure to install it using the install button next we have to load this library or include it using hash include and in these double quotes we write the name which is liquid crystal then underscore i2c and don't forget the dot h because it's a library after that, we create an LCD object of type liquid crystal underscore I2C, which comes with this library. Then we can give it a name like LCD. And in these parentheses, we have to pass in three parameters. The first one is the address of the I2C module. Basically, each I2C module has some kind of address like 0x3f. In some cases, you have to use 0x27 so make sure to try both of these and check if it's working. For me, it is 3F. Then the number of columns and the number of rows. So this LCD display has 16 columns and two rows. That's why I'm going to pass in 16, then two. Before we use this object LCD, we have to initialize it using LCD dot init or initialize. Then we can turn on the backlights using LCD dot backlight finally we can print any kind of text using lcd dot print which takes a string like hello esp32 and don't forget the semicolon let's give it a try after selecting the board which is a node mcu32s and the port of the usb cable i've talked about this in the first video make sure to check it out once you do that we can hit the upload button also, we have to hold down the boot key when we have the message connecting. 
which is this key. If this text doesn't appear, make sure to change the address to 0x27, or in some cases you have to rotate this potentiometer to adjust the brightness. For me, everything is okay. We have the text hello ESP32. And sometimes you need to write a text at a specific position, like the second row. And to do that, we have other methods, like LCD dot set cursor to change the cursor position, which takes two values, the column and the row. For example, we can go to the column number two and the row number one, which is the second row. And let's hit upload again. And yeah, the text starts from the second row and the column number two, which is the third column. We have hello ESP32. And if you want to get rid of the text, we have a function that is called lcd.clear, which clears the screen. Now that we know how to use this LCD display, let's make a project that takes the advantages of the ESP32 microcontroller, like the Wi-Fi capability. We are going to display the date and the time on the LCD display. We can use the NTP server that we have talked about in the previous video to request the date and the time from this NTP server. Then we will display it on the LCD display. And you don't need any external hardware like this RTC module that allows you to get the real time. Instead, we can take it from the internet by connecting the ESP32 board to the router using its SSID and password. Then we can use a server that is located on the internet, like the NTP server, and it is a network time protocol that allows you to get the local time in your country. Then we can take it and display it on the LCD display. And to do that, let's open up the simple time sketch. You could go to File, Examples, then under ESP32, we have time and simple time. First, make sure to put the SID and the password of your Wi-Fi network. Here we have two NTP servers that you can use, like the pool.ntp.org. I'm going to leave it as it is. Next, we have to provide this sketch with the GMT offset, which is the difference between your local time and the GMT time. You can search for it on the internet. Sometimes it is called UTC or Universal Time Clock. For me, I'm living in Tunisia and the offset is one hour, which means 3600 seconds. Finally, we have the daylight offset in seconds. In most cases, it is 3600, but this sketch is printing the date and time on the serial monitor. Anyways, let's give it a try. And once it's done uploading, we can open up the serial monitor from this icon. Make sure that you are selecting the same board rate, which is 115200. And there you go. We have the date and time. And it is the exact one on my computer. Let's change it and display it on the LCD display. We have this print local time function that prints the time on the serial monitor. Instead, we are going to create an LCD object. Of course, you have to include the library using include liquid crystal underscore I2C. Next, we can create the LCD object. To save a little bit of time, I'm going to copy this line of code of our previous sketch and paste it to create the LCD object. Then let's take the initialization, which are these lines of code, and put it under the setup function. Then we can adjust this function to print the local time on the LCD display. So I will leave this line of code of the serial monitor. First, we have to clear the LCD display using lcd.clear. Then we move our cursor using lcd.setCursor, 0 and 0. And I want to write the full name of the month, like December. Then space, the day of the month, and then the year, like 2022. And to do that, we can use lcd.print. We're going to use the same notation. First, we have to take this object and paste it under this print function. Then we want to print the full month name. 
To get the full month name, we use percentage and uppercase B. Then we add space and get the day of the month using percentage and lowercase d. And finally the year, percentage, uppercase Y. And don't forget the semicolon. After that, I will move the cursor to the second row using LCD dot set cursor, the column number zero and the row number one, which is the second row. And we use LCD dot print. And let's write the day of the week using percentage A, like Wednesday. Next, I will add the hours and colon, percentage M for the minutes, and finally the seconds if you want. And this function is called each five seconds. You could change it to one second. And that's pretty much it. Let's test this project by hitting upload. If you get the message connecting, you have to hold down the boot key on the ESP32 board. Then it will be connected to the internet and it will request the time from the NTP server. And there you go, it is displayed on the LCD display. But the number of seconds doesn't appear because the name of the day is a little bit long. To fix this problem, instead of using percentage A, uppercase, you could use lowercase which is the abbreviated day name, so it will only take the first letters, like man. The same thing for the month, if you want to make it short, you could use percentage and lowercase b. Then let's hit upload. And there you go, we have created a real-time clock. So I think that's pretty much it guys for this video. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.